All right, let's see some more examples of calculating antiderivatives using the power rule, uh, plus also the linearity properties. That is, constant multiples can be taken out of integrals, and we can take sums and integrals, uh, sums and difference of integrals here. So when you look at something like this, the integral of x squared minus one quantity squared, uh, if this were a derivative problem, we would be tempted to use the chain rule. But for antiderivatives, we don't have a chain rule yet. Uh, there is no chain rule for us to be using. And as such, we can't use a chain rule. Uh, we might learn something like the chain rule later. It's a little bit more complicated, uh, but we'll see this at the end of the semester. It's called a U substitution. In the meanwhile, though, we can utilize some algebraic simplification because after all, if it's x squared minus one squared, that just means x squared minus one times x squared minus one. And if we FOIL that thing, uh, we end up with x to the fourth minus two x squared plus one. And we can take the antiderivative of that polynomial there. By the power rule, we're gonna get x to the fifth over five minus two uh, x cubed over three and then plus x plus a constant. So you'll notice in this example, I was able to do each individual term one by one by one. And that gives us our antiderivative. x to the fifth over five minus two, x, two thirds x cubed uh, plus x plus c. All right, the next one here. Um, if we want to find the antiderivative of nine e to the t, well, I would first take out the constant so we have to find nine times integral of e to the t dt. And so now we're like, well, we have to find a function whose whose derivative is e to the t. Hmm. You probably don't have to search very far for that because we know if you take um, the function e to the t and you take its derivative with respect to t, that'll just be e to the t again. Since So e to the x, the natural exponential is its own derivative, which also makes it its own antiderivative. This is pretty cool. You're gonna get nine e to the t. But you have to be careful. You have to, have to, rem you have to remember to take this plus a constant, right? So we get nine e to the t plus a constant. And so every, every derivative rule that we know can be translated into an antiderivative rule. So the derivative of e to the t is equal to e to the t. This is the same thing as saying the integral of e to the x dx is equal to e to the x plus a constant. Uh, this one is worth saving for a future date there. Well, how about the function, the integral of four over x dx? Well, I can take that constant out four times the integral of one over x dx. And note here that the function one over x could be written as x to negative one, but you can't use the power rule function for, or the power rule for antiderivatives here because the power rule doesn't work when x equals negative one. We need a function whose derivative is equal to one over x. And we know a function who does that. Uh, we know that if you take the natural log of x, its derivative is one over x. Now that's almost right, uh, but in terms of domain, the domain of one over X is everything except for zero, but the domain for the natural log is only positive numbers. If we add in the absolute value of X, then the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of X is still one over X. And that's actually how we're gonna record this antiderivative. The integral of one over X DX is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of X plus a constant. And so you're gonna to wanna to save this for later. Every derivative rule we have can be turned around and become an antiderivative rule. So we see here that the antiderivative of four over x is four times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus a constant. Don't forget the plus c and also don't forget the absolute values. Like so. All right, let's look at another uh, one last example of this. Uh, because there's two parts, let's break up the integral into those two parts. We get four times the integral of sine of x dx. That's the first indefinite integral. And then the next one, we're gonna take the integral of, well, I'm gonna break up that fraction as well because I don't have a quotient rule. I can break it up into two different pieces. We get two x to the fifth over x dx. And we're gonna get minus the integral of x to the one half over x dx. Now I know exactly what to do on those second pieces. I can simplify those fractions down so I get a power function. So I get two times the integral of x to the fourth, five minus one there. And then for the other one, I'm gonna get the integral, negative the integral of, I have the one half power and the first power. So their difference will give me x to the negative one half dx. I can apply the power rule for them, but what do you do for sine? Well, we have to find a function whose derivative 
is equal to sine. And we're kind of close with that. We know a function that almost does that. Um, it is true that cosine of x, its derivative is negative sine of x. And we do also know that the derivative of sine is equal to cosine. So if we turn those around, we get the following. We know that the integral of cosine of x is going to equal, oops, almost forgot my differential there. We know that the antiderivative of cosine of x is going to equal sine of x plus a constant. Uh, because the derivative of sine is cosine, so the antiderivative of cosine is negative sine. Uh, but for, for sine there, the integral of sine dx, we have to, we have to recognize that the derivative of sine is cosine, but the antiderivative of sine is gonna be negative cosine of x plus a cos plus co c there. And you can double check there. If you take the derivative of negative sine, the derivative of cos sorry, the negative cosine, the derivative of the cosine is negative sine, so the double negative makes it a positive. And so that those those principles we need to remember right here for later. Derivative rules turn into antiderivative rules. All right, so let's finish this problem here. Uh, the antiderivative of sine is gonna be negative cosine of x. So we get negative four cosine of x. Uh, and then do the do the other the other antiderivatives there, we get negative four cosine of x. Antiderivative of x to the fourth, that's gonna be two over five x to the fifth. Uh, and then we're going to get negative x to the positive one half power. We added one to negative one half, so divide by one half. And so in the end, uh, we end up with negative four cosine of x plus two fifths x to the fifth minus, well, if you divide by one half, that's a two, and we get the square root of x, that's just the one half power plus a constant. You could leave it as a one half power if you prefer, and this gives us our antiderivative. All right, uh, stay tuned for the next video. We're gonna look at some applications of this antiderivative uh, and see particularly why we care about this plus c so much. See ya.